Hey YouTube, today we're going to do a side-by-side -side comparison of two of the most popular high-end watches known in the world. And what we have here in front of us today is we have an Omega Seamaster Professional. And on the other side we have a Rolex Submariner. Now, one of, the, one of the main differences you see right off the bat when you hold these side-by-side is the Omega is a 44 millimeter watch and the Rolex is a 40 millimeter watch. Now the differences in these two companies is Omega likes to be more innovative and make more modern designs and kind of keep up with the times. They are they're actually always a one step ahead of Rolex. Rolex likes to keep it more traditional and their main claim to fame is everything on a Rolex watch is made in-house. They make all their movements, they make every part, they refine their own steel, stuff like that. Omega does not. Omega is owned by the Swatch Company and they use ETA movements on the inside of their watches. Now they do, they're, I'm not saying these aren't high quality because they absolutely are. They're just, they focus more on design more than manufacturing of their own stuff. So some of the differences in these things, a mega watch is a lot heavier because it's a lot bigger watch. And um, they both have ceramic bezels on them. They both run about the same exact smoothness and everything like that. If you look, these are both diver watches. The um, differences is the Omega watch has what Rolex used to have as the diver extension. You just push on this and you can wear this over the top of a diver suit and the Rolex came up with their glide lock system where you can do this on the fly. You can adjust this anywhere you want on the fly. A little bit more precise on it. But they're both really good bracelets on them. Uh, Omega watch on the back. This one here happens to have a clear case back where you can see the movement on the inside of it. Rolex has never done that, and I don't think they ever will. Rolex movements, I mean, Rolex case backs are just plain Jane looking. There's nothing nothing to write on about. But Rolex relies more on their name recognition in the world, and Omega relies more on their design. Omega always comes up with something really cool. Rolex always sticks to saying. Now, Rolex did just recently come out, like this is a Submariner. They came out with the 41 millimeter Submariner. And it was like groundbreaking stuff. That they came out with a 41 millimeter watch. Well, Omega's been doing that for years. And now this one's a 44 millimeter watch. Some people like bigger watches. Some people like smaller watches. I don't like overly large watches. Unless it's, it's tasteful. And it looks good. And this one happens to look good. I don't know how a Submariner would look. I think it's more traditional to leave it 40 millimeter. But this is the newer, the Rolex is the newer Supercase came out in I think 2011. So it actually wears a little bit bigger than the older Submariners because it's got a lot more beefier metal and stuff around the side. But anyway, folks, I'm not an expert on these watches. I just wanted to show you. I'm a watch guy. I like watches. I like fine watches, and I want to show you a side-by-side, -side, show you the two biggest competitors out there in Swiss watches is Rolex and Omega, and I want to show you a side-by-side -side comparison of them. But if anybody has any questions on either one of these two watches, I'll try my best to answer them. Like I said, I'm not an expert on them, but I can usually figure stuff out for you. Anyway, folks, thank you very much for watching my video today, and you folks have a great day.